Welcome to the Dr. Verna Show. This is a show for you. It's about you. It's about your life. It's about how you can be excellent. I am only interested in one thing, and it's you becoming your most excellent self. You can live an amazing life. You can be successful. You can be happy. You can be productive. You can live with a purpose. You can do these things, but you have to learn how to do it. This show is about teaching you how to become your most excellent self. In this work around power, the first place to start is understanding exactly what does power represent to you. When you hear that word, what, how does it make you feel? That word power, how does it make you feel? And in this work, we must be raw and totally honest with ourselves if we are to do this work. You know what I am tired of? I am tired of people lying. Like flat-footed lying. People lie, they're not honest. They're not honest, they're not honest with you. They're not honest with themselves. And I'm tired of it because here's, here's what I know, Miss Alicia, for you to get from here to here, you have to get really honest with what's going on in you. And if you won't get honest, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep lying to yourself and you're gonna lie to people around you, and you're gonna lie to your situation, and before you know it, your, 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 your life creates this chaos and mess and you're just entangled in all of it because you're not honest. And in this work, you have to be brutally honest with yourself about who you are and how you think and how you feel about who you are. And in this work, it's also important to keep judgment away from you. And what does that mean? The moment you start judging it. So when we do this first exercise on power, what does power mean to you? If you judge your feeling about it, you won't be honest. Say for example, you've been in an abusive relationship. Someone's kicked you around. Someone slapped you around. Someone's cussed you out, right? And if you're not honest about power, you relate that to power, you'll not be honest about that, and you'll step away from that, and that thing will still keep you in this place of feeling powerless. Because the moment that thing comes up again, what you'll do is you'll step back from it, as opposed to saying, no, I refuse to let anything take my power. Anything. So being honest about it without judgment, you're not, however you feel, whatever you've been through, however you think is how you feel, what you've been through, what you think. And what I discovered that everyone goes through something. No one escapes it. And no one has like a better something than my something. Have you ever heard people trade stories before? Right? Well, I'm sadder than you are. No, 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 no. I'm more pitiful than you are. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm more hurt than you are. Oh, no, no, no. You just don't know. No, my husband. No, my husband. Oh, no, you don't understand. No, 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 no. I've been abused. Oh, no, I've been abused. Right? Right? In business. Well, my business is like, well, my business is better. <laughs> right? Because what? People are always like looking for a way to judge something. Don't judge yourself in this work. Don't judge yourself, because for you to judge yourself means that you're gonna to be totally dishonest with yourself. Open yourself, whatever, we all go through stuff, whatever comes out of you comes out of you, and you put it on your paper and you work through it. So this first exercise is really an exercise of power, and I want you in just, oh, I'm just gonna give you like 15 seconds, really totally 15 seconds to on a piece of paper, and you've all been given paper and pencil, I want you to write down as many words as you can think of that you associate with the word power. As many words that you can associate with the word power. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. Go ahead and go ahead and start. You only have 15 seconds, just quick write them down. If you have shorthand, use shorthand.
Okay, and stop. All right, just offer some of them. Some of the words that you associate with power. Anyone? Strong. Strong. Rich. Competence. Soul. Passion. Inspiration. Good. Choice. Choice. Nice. Influence. Bold. Control. Smart. Smart. Mm -hmm. Male. It's good. And not the male you get from the male either. Man male. Yes? Mm -hmm. Racism. Hatred. Who's it? Rape. Secrets. You're going down your list, Molly. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. Power. Power. Anything else? What do you associate with power? Being excellent. That's good. Change. It's great. Somewhere on your paper, I want you to think about when, if I came to you and said, I'm going to give you all of the power in the world, how do you think you would feel? And what's the first thing you would do with that power? How do you think you would feel if I came to you and said, I'm going to give you all the power in the world? How would you feel, first of all, just check in with your feelings. And then secondly, what would be your very next thought about what you would do with that power? Write it down. How would you feel? And what would you do? How would you feel and what would you do with it? Now I want you to think of a time, and we've all had this time, when, when you felt absolutely powerless. Absolutely powerless. How did you feel? How did that make you feel? And what did you do with that feeling? when you felt absolutely powerless. How did that make you feel? And what did you do with that feeling? So what is the greatest lie that is told to you when you feel powerless? What is the greatest lie that you listen to? And it is a lie. You can't do anything about it and that you're the only one going through it. I'm the only one. There's no one else in the world who's ever been domestically abused. There's no one else in the world who's ever seen you know, this happen. There's no one else in the world. And it is a lie. People go through stuff all the time. And every time you go to the mall, don't look at any of those people who look perfect. They're all a mess. They're all a mess. Right? So wherever you find people, you're going to find issues. So the next time you're looking at another people, just look at them and say, boy, you are powerful, but I know you got some issues. Right? Because it is a fact that you're not alone. You are not alone. Whatever you've been through, someone has been through it. And when you come to the place of understanding that you actually have power, and that you can do something about it. Anything you have faced in life. Anything you face in life. The only time that I, I, that, that I feel as though you can be powerless is as a child. When you haven't come to the place where you are a place of knowing. Right? But once you come to a place of knowing, and for children, children who are abused, that's just plain abuse. And you should know, God, God said himself, if you mess with children, you might as well put a rock around your neck and throw yourself in the lake. It's in the Bible. It's probably in the Quran too, right? You don't mess with kids. You don't mess with kids. But once you come to a place of knowing, 
no matter what has happened to you, you can do something about it. And that do something about it has everything to do with you understanding who you are and what you have that is specific to you. So let's go to the second piece of actually defining actually what exactly is power. There are two types of power in this world. Right? There's what I would call the outside power. This is all the stuff that's around you. This is all the stuff that you're given. This is the title that you get at your job. This is how much money you make. This is the kind of car you drive. This is all the outside stuff. What's so interesting about outside power, in the workplace we refer to it as positional power, but guess what? In life you have power too. If you're a parent, you have positional power, right? If you are a sibling and you're the oldest one, you have positional power. If you're a mom, you have positional power. If you are just kind of in life, there's places to have this kind of outside power where you have some sort of position, title, so forth. That's not the kind of power we're talking about because all of that outside stuff can somehow be taken away from you. You can lose your job, you can lose your money, you can lose your car, your kids can walk away from you and never speak to you again. Right? So all those outside things, those are things that, are, that you absolutely cannot depend on. You cannot depend on your job because you may lose your job. You can't depend on your business, Amy, because guess what? Tomorrow, you know, you could have one bad client who goes and sends one viral message about you on Facebook and you could lose 50 clients in one day. Been there, done that, right? So you, you, you can't depend on it. You simply can't depend on it. All of the outside stuff, you simply can't depend on it. It's nice when you have it, but it doesn't define who you are. You are not defined by what you have. It does not define you. Which is why, Miss Lee, you can get to the place where you have nothing and still be so extraordinary that people cannot even resist coming to find you. Right? I mean, it's just incredible. Why? Because you found where the real source of power lies in you. And it is a myth in our society that the people who have this stuff, I just got the, the latest Forbes magazine, and I was so sick about it. You know, because they had the billionaire guy, you know, what's his name? Sir, whatever, what is what's his name? Yeah, Sir Richard, something, 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 who's retired, you know, who says he's retired, but not really, because he still manages all of his stocks and investments. When you're still managing everything, you're not retired. Right? <laughs> You're just doing your business differently. You know, and I'm, I'm going through this magazine and, and he's on every other page and he's got all these poses and all this stuff and he's talking about all of his money and all blah, 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 blah. And I thought to myself, you know what, Sir Richard, buddy? Why don't you let me come and mess with your stocks and take all your stuff? Let me just come in there and just take all your stuff. Let me take your airplane, let me take your money, all your stocks, let me take your ties, let me take your clothes, let me take your little girlfriends who only like you because you know you're 65 years old and they only like you because you got money. Let me just take all this stuff and see what happens with Sir Richard. I was testing him out. Why? Because power has absolutely nothing to do with the outside stuff, and that is what we're told in this world, that our power is about our outside stuff. And what I want you to know, this work is about your inside power, right here, inside, unseen. It is non-negotiable. It has been given to you, non-negotiable. You don't get to negotiate with that thing, Trisha. It's just in there. No one can take it, and it's time for you to stop giving it away. Right? No one can take it, it's time. So, so the rules, here are the rules of personal power. And this is your inside power, it's called your personal power. This is the power that makes you awesome, extraordinary. 
This is the power that when someone has beat you down so bad that you get up from the beaten and look at the person who done beat you and say to them, but you know what? You can make my face black and blue, but you can't touch my soul. And I'm gonna get my little butt out of here, make some better decisions about men and keep going. Yeah? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? When you lose it all and you go inside and you say, now what, is the, what are the non-negotiables in my life? My power is non-negotiable. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Um, I am uh, married and I have a wonderful husband, Shane Martin Price, love him, love him. And a part of why I can do my work is because I'm totally supported at home, totally supported at home. You know, if I say I need to go there, he says, okay, I'll take care of the kids. Right? And I have four children, so I have, you know, I have things going on, right? And uh, typically if we go somewhere together, my husband drives. <clears throat> and, um, so, <laughs> and I'm kind of a wild driver, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. You know, I can kind of make some things happen when I'm driving, right? <laughs> so my husband's driving with me. <laughs> he's driving with me and uh, he's like holding on to a seat like this. <laughs> and then, and then Mr. Janae, he tries to tell me how to drive. <laughs> Wrong mama. Wrong wife. Wrong woman. <laughs> And you have to know my husband, he's like this, man's man, you know what I mean? He's like, you know, black power, you know what I mean? He's like, you know what I mean? He's the man. And so I looked at my husband, and at first I just looked at him, and I said, I want you to chill out. <laughs> because I'm driving this car and not you, so just chill out, you're going to be okay. <laughs> And then, for some reason, he just didn't want to listen to me. So my next thing was, I looked at my husband, Lee, and you know my husband. I said, sweetheart, I love you. However, if you say one more thing to me about my driving, I'm going to stop the car and put you out. <laughs> chilled out and said okay <laughs> and we kept on driving and I was serious <laughs> I mean I was serious why why because you know what I know how to drive and I don't need someone telling me how to drive now let me tell you when I talk about your power being non-negotiable at that moment you know here's my husband he's a strong man I could have felt powerless. I could have felt like, oh, I should do this. And then, then you start second guessing yourself and you don't do what you do well and so forth. Like, no, uh -uh, that's not going to happen here. And so in life, in life, you have these big situations in your life going, you should do this. You should do that. You should turn here. You should. And really, it's all outside stuff. And what I want you to do is to go inside and say, oh no, what are the non-negotiables? So here's the four rules of power, write them down. The first rule is that you were born with it. You're simply born with it. You didn't get it from your parents. Are you kidding? Some of your parents are a mess. You know, they, they lost their power a long time ago. There's no way that they could have given you power, right? Some of them barely had you, bless her heart. So that rule of knowing that you were what, born, it's a core principle, that you were born with power. And so just, just kind of say that to yourself. Just look at that sentence and just say it to yourself. Just, and say it in the affirmative. Just simply say, I was born with power. I was born with power. Just, just say it to yourself. Because if you're going to get your power back, you have to know that it was yours to begin with. You won't go get it if you don't think it was yours to begin with. So you were what? You were born with it. How many of you have children in this room? How many of you have children? Okay, so you know. When your child comes into the world, right? They're beautiful and they're sweet, 
But let me tell you, that little bundle of, of, that, that you've gotten blessed with is loaded. And one of the things that it's loaded with is power. And here's what power gives you as a human being. Power gives you the ability at any time, say any time, Anytime. Say any time. Say any moment. Any moment. To create change in your life. Power gives you the ability at any moment to create change in your life. And it's instant, just so you know. It's not 10 years from now. It's instant. It instantly happens. Because where it instantly happens is on the inside and soon that inside begins to what influence the what outside. the outside got a question alicia if it happens instantly yes why does it take so long for things to change because your inside has to believe that you actually have it and most of our insides don't believe we you actually have it because you go back to your inside and you start second guessing yourself, you start wondering about who you are, but when you know it's a non-negotiable, you were given this thing by God, the God who created the universe, you understand that you're loaded with it. Then the question becomes learning how to use it. Right? But the moment that you actually authentically use your power, your life instantly begins to change. That very moment. How many of you have been through some you know, tough, some tough, tough things? Can you remember the moment you made a power decision? You remember that moment where you said, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right? When Rosa Parks sat down, she said, enough is enough. No matter what happens on the outside today, I am tired and I'm going to use my power and make a decision to sit down. And, that, and, and, and it changed the course of history in an instant. And in an instant, you can change the course of your own personal history. By what? Understanding that it's already enough. So the first core principle of power is that you were simply born with it. In other words, it can never be taken away from you. It can be hidden, right? And it can be covered up, but it can't be taken away. The second core principle of power, so the born power, this is, and this is, this is, I, I, I love this one. This is the non-compete part of power, is that no one has more power than you. There's no competition in the world of power, of personal power. There's no competition. So I talked about earlier about, you know, I'm better than you are, you better, you know. That doesn't exist in the world of personal power because we all get exactly the amount that we will need for our lives. Now the question becomes, who's going to use it? Right? So when you understand your personal power, you stop competing. Now let me say this to us women, because we all happen to be women in this room. Women, we are terrible in this area. Because we are socialized in our society to compete. My hair is better than your hair. My look is better than your look. My clothes are better than your clothes. My nails get done, yours don't get done. My high heels are higher than your high heels. Right? I mean, craziness. So we can actually walk into a room, look at another woman across the room, have never ever talked to the woman and not liked her. I know, I know, and then, and then we stand there feeling powerless because we just gave away our power through just a feeling in that instant to this other woman. We don't even know who she is. This child could be a wreck. <laughs> you know, waiting to happen in your life, coming to your life soon, walking wreck. Right, have you seen, seen that little movie, Wreck-It Ralph? <laughs> it's a silly little movie. But Ralph's whole passion in life is to wreck things, right? I mean, there are some people that that's what they do. They just walk around wrecking people's lives. 
right? So this non-compete element is very important. No one has more power than you. Please write that down. No one has more power than me. No one, no one, no one. They may have a bigger business, they may have more money, but they don't have any more power. And what's so interesting about understanding and getting your power back is that when you get your power back, let me tell you, you know, I, I am determined to be healthy and happy and to look good for a long time, right? And how I do that is I hold on to this notion that no one has more power than me. So whatever room I walk into, whatever situation, I walk in like I actually own the place. Like I'm supposed to be there. Like this is my destiny. <laughs> like there is something in that room for me. Why? Because I understand this core principle of no one has more power than me. So just look at the woman next to you and just with a real attitude, say to her, do you know that no one, no one has more power than me? Just say to her. No one. No one. <laughs> now, now see that Trish is getting into it. <laughs> you got to know that you know. No one. No one. Right? And all the people who are pretending to have power, more power than you, they don't. They don't. No one does. And that core principle is very important. Now here's the third core principle. And women, this is where we lose it. And I'll tell you exactly how we lose it, right? No one can take your power, but you can give it away. No one can take, and how I want you to write that down is simply saying, no one can take my power. I want you to own that thing. I know, the library is closing in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm, they're just going to kick us right on out of here. It's all right, though, because I'm going to be done in 12.2 minutes, right? No one can take my power, but I can give it away. Let's just brainstorm about that for a second. Because power is an inside work, it's non-negotiable, it can never be taken. So then we have to give it. So how do people typically give away their power? Remember, your power is your ability to create change, your ability to make a decision and to create change. And I'm gonna give you the five words of power before we leave so that you can study those words, think on those words, and make those words work for you in your life, right? But how do we typically give away our power? Someone tell me. Okay, so we give away our power with our own internal dialogue. Exactly. Exactly. So your internal dialogue, this is a conversation you're having with yourself. You walk around saying someone's better than me. Or like for me it's like if somebody gives me attitude or if somebody like, you know, treats me a certain way then I'm like, okay, they must be, you know, they must think they're better than me and then I kind of start to think, okay, maybe they are because they get more things and I don't know, I think a lot, but right. it's probably but when that happens, what you're really saying to yourself is that I am not good enough. And then what you do is you step back from that situation, your confidence level drops dr dramatically, right? Someone else, someone else, how do you give away your power? And that's an internal thing. And they, they never even said a word to you, yeah. right? Line, yeah. They don't even know you. I mean, they could have just had a hard day. Right. And you happen to be in their way. Right? Mm -hmm. Someone else. How do you give away your power? You don't stand up. You don't speak up, Andre. You don't say anything. Right? Your life is on the line and you're going to not say something? It's time to speak. It's time to say something. Emotions fine. Cry if you have to. Yell if you have to. Shout if you have to. But speak. Get that thing out of you. <laughs> As long as you know what you're saying, right. it don't matter, they know. 